सेंटर फॉर एडवांस्ड मेंटेनेंस टेक्नोलॉजी कैमटेक ग्वालियर प्रेजेंट ट्रेनिंग वीडियो फिल्म फॉर डीजल लोको पायलट ऑन माइक्रो प्रोसेसर बेस्ड कंट्रोल सिस्टम फॉर एल्को लोको disclaimer the information given in this training video film does not supersede any existing provision laid down in RDSO and railway boards instructions the instructions given in the film are not statutory and are only for the purpose of guidance or to upgrade knowledge of diesel loco pilot if at any point contradiction is observed then railway board and RDSO guidelines or zonal railway instructions may be followed objective The main objective of this video film is to upgrade knowledge of loco pilots about MEP660 microprocessor control systems and to disperse correct operating practices and location of assemblies or components. This film will definitely enhance the knowledge of diesel loco pilots investigation, finding causes of failure and remedial action if required. The video film contains introduction of old excitation control system introduction of microprocessor based control system salient features of microprocessor control system additional features of microprocessor control system items removed from previous control system description of some important assemblies of microprocessor control system display unit and navigation through menus classification and reset procedure of fault messages important do's and don'ts troubleshooting excitation control system regulates the exciter field current through a transistor switch operated by the pulse width modulator basically a magnetic amplifier the average current is decided by the on to off ratio of the pwm which is controlled by the mixer reference network basically a resistor network with two saturable reactors and rectifiers the mixer reference network receives proportionate feedback signals from ta voltage ta current and engine speed based on the input signal levels it sends a controlling signal to the pwm which controls the exciter field current and its output the exciter output is directly connected to alternator field through gf contactor which is again controlled by propulsion control system thus traction alternator power is controlled to the required constant hp at each notch the mep660 is a complete locomotive control system consisting engine cranking loco propulsion control excitation control auxiliary generator control and continuous monitoring of safety devices on the locomotive Some of the improved features are self-load test of locomotive and inbuilt event recorder designed and developed as per RDSO specifications. MEP660 loco control system is designed to replace the existing propulsion and E-type excitation system. MEP660 control system eliminates mechanical interlocking, uses microprocessor to control the locomotive through software logic. salient features of microprocessor based control system fault diagnostics microprocessor based system has fault diagnostic capabilities the system continuously monitors various operational parameters and checks for abnormalities in the functioning of various traction equipments the fault is displayed on the display unit along with restrictions imposed because of the fault for information of the driver the fault code along with real time and date stamp is logged in the error log memory self diagnostics this system keeps on monitoring its own modules and sensors continually for their healthiness fault tolerance fault tolerance capabilities are also in this system for certain faults in such cases the operation of the locomotive continues in the normal way and the fault is logged in the error log with data pack for later analysis automatic fault recovery For most of the faults the recovery conditions are identified and whenever the fault ceases to exist the fault recovery is recognized and displayed to the driver on the display unit and the event is registered in the error log Short term rating of traction motors 
the equipment automatically takes care of short-term traction motor current ratings and does not depend upon the driver for protection of the equipment. Self-test to digital inputs and outputs. MEP660 has self-test facility for all digital inputs, outputs and output devices which enable the maintenance staff in identification of wiring faults quickly. Self-load box test. A simple load test can be carried out to know the performance of the engine and entire control system. Event recorders. This system records the data on a compact non-volatile flash memory unit that does not need any electrical power to retain the data in the memory. In the short-term memory, the various data are recorded in one-second interval. Latest 45 hours data is available at any time to download. In the long-term memory, only speed and distance along with the date and time are recorded in 20 seconds interval. Latest 225 days of data is available at any time to download. Multi-Reset Vigilance Control Device or Alerter This control system, MEP660, is equipped with vigilance control to enhance the safety of the locomotive operation. The Multi-Reset Vigilance Control device provided in NEP660 recognizes the following loco operations performed by the driver and assumes he is vigilant. Change of notch position, application or release of dynamic brake, application or release of brakes through A9, operation of sand buttons, operation of electrical horn buttons, change of locomotive direction through reverser handle operation of GF switches, sufficient increase or decrease of dynamic brake level that is 20% through master handle. Operation of VCD reset switch. If the driver performs none of the above operations within 60 seconds, the MEP660 system initially alerts the driver with visual indication, blinking LED provided on each control stand for a period of 17 seconds. Auto flasher. The MEP660 control system switches on the train's flasher light automatically during train parting or driver applies driver emergency brake. In addition, driver can also switch on flasher lights whenever needed. Auto emergency brake system. This feature is provided in locomotive to apply penalty brakes while working in the ghat sections. Additional features. Engine shutdown with failure of crankcase breaker. Limitation of power to fourth notch with failure of RBB or diode hot. Power duration from T3 setting to T4 setting 90 to 95 degrees Celsius. The engine power is derated by 20% of the notch power for every degree raised from 90 degree onwards. 8th notch RPM at hottest temperature When the engine temperature reaches to T4 setting 95 degree, engine RPMs are raised to 8th notch automatically by cutting of power for faster cooling of engine. Low idle feature When the locomotive is in idle for more than 10 minutes, the engine RPM is reduced to 350 for reducing the fuel oil consumption. List of item removed from previous control system. Control panels. Excitation control panel, EXCP. Engine control panel, ECP. Voltage regulator panel, VRP. Transition regulator panel, TRP. Resistor panels. Wheel slip resistor panel WSRR1 and 2, wheel slip control resistors WR8, WR9, and WR10, oscillator voltage dividing panel OVDR, generator voltage dividing panel GVDR or VDP, 
Taco Generator Load Resistor Panel TGLR Braking Limiting Resistor Panel BKER1 and 2 Relays 12 relays have been removed and remaining 11 relays retained. Rotating machines. Axle alternator. Taco generator. 6 TM speed sensors. ESS. Miscellaneous items removed. Transition excitation transformer. TET. Armature current control reactor. ACCR. Stabilizing Panel Step Panel Voltage Regulator Current Limiting Shunt Load Emitter Shunt LAS Engine Temperature Switches Description of Some Important Assemblies The Microprocessor Based Locomotive Control System MEP660 consists of the following sub-assemblies Control Unit Type MEP660 this is main control equipment of the microprocessor system. The control unit consists 18 plus 1 spare plug in module type cards in dustproof enclosures. These modules are provided with proper identification number both on the module and as well as on the control unit of each slot. Control card MEPCC the MEPCC card is the main control card having a microcontroller along with its programmed software, various circuits and interface circuits. All the digital, analog and frequency inputs are connected to this card. Control card MAUCC The MAUCC card is the second control card having a microcontroller along with its programmed software, various interface circuits, this card controls the auxiliary generator field current to regulate the terminal voltage at 72 plus minus 1 volt. Control card MWSCC The MWSCC card is a third control having a microcontroller along with its programmed software. This card detects the wheel slip and communicates to the MEPCC card to control the power during wheel slip. Digital Input Cards MDIP16 MIDIP16 These digital input cards consist the hardware required for converting the high voltage signals of nominal 72 volt DC from the locomotive circuits to isolated low voltage signals of 5 volt DC required for the microprocessor of the system. The green color LEDs provided on this card indicate presence of 72 volt DC on that particular channel. The yellow LEDs indicate the signal being sent to microcontroller after isolation and signal conditioning. Digital Output Cards MLSD16 and MHSD16 or MIHSD16. The digital output cards converts 5V digital signals generated by the microcontroller system MEPCC card to 72 volt DC power signals required for driving relays, contactors, solenoids, indication lamps, etc. in the locomotive circuits. These cards provide electrical isolation between locomotive circuits and microcontroller circuits. Each card can process 16 output signals. Analog Input Cards The MEP660 system continuously monitors various parameters like voltages, currents, pressures and temperatures of various equipments in the locomotive through different sensors. Analog Input Card MAIP8AU This card MAIP8AU card is connected between MAUCC card and ADB1 parameters pertaining to auxiliary generator and battery charging is mainly connected to this card. Analog input card MAIP8WS This card MAIP8WS card is connected between MWSCC card and ADB2 individual traction motor 
current signals are mainly connected to this card. Analog input card MAIP8EP. This card MAIP8EP card is connected between MEPCC card and ADB3. All the excitation related parameters are mainly connected to this card. Improved analog input card MAIP16 or MIAI. This card MAIP16 or MIAI modified analog input card process the signals received from BPP, BCP, FOP, BAP and LOP sensors. Frequency input card MFIP16. This card consists of the hardware required for converting the signals generated by speed sensors of traction motors and diesel engine. Pulse Width Modulator Card MPWM2 The PWM card converts the low voltage pulse width modulated signals generated by the microcontroller system to a high power 72 volt output for controlling the exciter field current and auxiliary generator field current. Excitation and Propulsion Power Supply Card MEPPS This module supplies various regulated power supplies of plus minus 9 volt, plus minus 12 volt and plus minus 15 volt required for the operation of all the cards in the control unit. Display Unit this sub-assembly consists of a 40-character X4 line alphanumeric vacuum fluorescent display VFD. It also consists of a keyboard for data entry by the operator and an acknowledged switch to silence the built-in buzzer, hooter and alarm gong ALG during fault message display. Analog Distribution Box ADB MDB701 the analog distribution box provides regulated DC power to various sensors that are connected to the ADB. It also collects output signals from these sensors and transmits them to the main control unit. There are four ADBs per loco. RPM distribution box RDB MDB702 the RPM distribution box RDB supplies power to all the speed sensors connected to the RDB. It also collects speed signals from these sensors and transmits these signals to the main control unit. Motor Cutout Switch Box MSP707 This module is a traction motor isolation box used to isolate any defective traction motor in service. Six toggle switches are provided on the box with an earmarking of MCOS1 to MCOS6. VCD Magnet Valve Type 3332104G VCD Magnet Valve is directly operated electro pneumatic valve used to apply penalty brakes whenever any safety devices like VCD, AEB, fire alert are operated in the locomotive. Breakers and Switches The nomenclature of all the breakers and switches almost same as conventional WD G3A locomotive. Extra Breakers New MPCB Microprocessor Circuit Breaker PLPB Pre-Lubrication Pump Breaker Display Unit and Navigation Through Menus The display unit is the main interface between the user and the equipment. Normally, a group of parameters also displayed in real time on the display unit. Different groups of such parameters are available for selection. The parameters are grouped functionally, for example, excitation related parameters, auxiliary generator related parameters, wheel RPMs and traction motor currents, etc. User can select any one of the groups for display and record the required locomotive parameters while testing the locomotive. By default, the display unit is in driver display mode. In addition to loco parameters, warning messages are also displayed during fault occurrence with or without audio based on the severity of the fault. To select A menu, submenu, 
operator has to simply press either menu option number or down arrow key till the required option is highlighted. Main menu, sub menu 1, sub menu 2, sub menu 3. Display parameters, false, display mode, test mode, exit, view false, clear false, false, view active false, registered false if any will be displayed, user can navigate through the false using down arrow key until no more fault log message is displayed. Press menu key to select exit option. Clear active false. Use zero to clear false message will be displayed. After a few seconds, log faults are displayed one by one. After noting down the false to clear fault, press zero key and down arrow key to see next fault. Continue the above till all faults are cleared. Press menu key to select exit option. Display mode. Excitation. Auxiliary. Wheel slip. Mixed. Driver display. The driver default display has got three screens. Idle screen, motoring screen, braking screen. Respective screens are changed automatically based on the control stand signals while the locomotive operation is being set by the driver. In each screen, relative parameters are displayed idle screen, motoring screen, braking screen, MCBG status, classification and reset procedure of fault messages. The faults are classified into three levels such as high, medium and low priority based on the severity of the effect of the fault on locomotive operation. These faults, irrespective of their priority level, are permitted to be cleared by the driver by pressing the menu key. Driver can reset the fault by operating the keys available on the display unit in the following sequence. Press menu key. The following main menu appears. False, display mode, test mode, exit. Press key 1 to select false. The following submenu appears. View active false, clear active false. Press key 2 to select clear active false. Use zero key to clear false messages appears first on the screen. After some time, the registered faults are shown one by one based on the priority of the faults. Press key 0 once and then enter key to clear the fault displayed on the screen. The fault is cleared and next fault is displayed. Important do's for diesel loco pilot. Keep always TE limit switch in normal position unless and until required. Keep MCOS switches always in on position for normal operation. Make a habit to check position of these TE limit and MCOS switches while taking overcharge. Switch off circuit breakers MCB1 and MCB2 on control desks while cranking. Press start button till cranking contactors picks up. More than 60 second if pre lube feature is available. Switch on circuit breaker CEB within 30 minutes while checking lube oil level. Switch off circuit breakers MCB1 and MCB2 in case of rear locomotive to avoid VCD function. Keep EPG cutout switch in off position in trail or dead locos. Apply loco brakes through SA9 and ensure BCP is more than 2 kg per square centimeter while loco is stabled. During continuous wheel slip and total power reduction, act as in the case of wheel slip with conventional locos. Apply brakes and do fast pumping on 8th notch if loco stalled with a message TM number excess current. Apply loco brakes when total power is reduced at 95 degree centigrade to avoid rollback. Press VCD reset when the VCD lamp blinks. Reset penalty brakes only when loco speed is zero and 
throttle is in idle and VCD lamp stops blinking. Important troubleshootings for diesel loco pilots on microprocessor based control system for Alco Loco. Engine shutdown with hot engine alarm and LED indications. Fault message coming, low water level. Message code 1001. Restriction, engine shuts down, hot engine LED glowing. Alarm bell, ringing continuously. Now fault is being acknowledged by loco pilot. Probable causes for engine shutdown. Less water level in the gauge. Defect in micro switch in LWS. Defect in bellow of LWS. Puncture float of LWS. Wire number T01 open circuit. Actions by loco pilot. Check water level in water level gauge. If water level is OK, check LWS operation by operating COC of LWS. Check glowing of four green and yellow LEDs on MDIP16 card on LED panel. If both green and yellow LEDs are glowing, LWS is normal. If both green and yellow LEDs are off, LWS operated, check reasons for LWS operation. If electronics water level indicator is provided and water level is OK in gauge, operate toggle switch if provided and keep watch over water level gauge. Put remark in the loco logbook and advise PCOR, power controller. Engine shut down with over speeding. Fault message coming, engine over speed. Message code 1002. Restriction, engine shuts down. Alarm bell. Ringing for 30 seconds with buzzer. Loco pilot acknowledging fault. Probable causes for engine shutdown. OSTA tripped. Fuel rake stuck in or fuel injection pump defective. Engine speed sensor ESS connector shorted. Defect in governor and rake stacking up. Actions by loco pilot. OSTA tripped. Reset it by resetting handle. Fuel rake stucking or fuel injection pump defective. Check fuel rakes and FIP. Engine speed sensor connector shorted. Open sensor and check on cam gear, cover and back panel. Defect in governor and wreck stucking up. Check governor linkage and wreck. Now crank the engine for starting. Push start button and watch lube oil pressure engage. Put remark in the loco logbook and advise PCOR, power controller. Engine shutting down with low lube oil plunger tripping. Fault message coming. LLOB trip. Reset plunger at engine off. Message code 1004 and 1005. Restriction. Engine shuts down and will not be cranking. Alarm bell. Ringing continuously. Loco pilot acknowledging fault. Probable causes for engine shutdown. WW Governor LLOB plunger tripped off. If LLOB plunger is OK, less lube oil level in lube oil sump. Actions by loco pilot. WW Governor LLOB plunger tripped off. Reset plunger properly. If LLOB plunger is OK, pull the knob out precisely of WW Governor and again reset it. Check lube oil level in sump. Check with dipstick. Check glowing of 5 numbers green and yellow LEDs on MDIP16 card. Put remark in the loco logbook and advise PCOR, power controller. Engine coming on idle with hot engine alarm. Fault message coming. Hot engine can't power up. Message code 1006. Restriction, power cutoff, 
engine RPM would be 8 notch. Motoring and dynamic braking prohibited. Alarm bell ringing continuously with buzzer for 30 seconds. Driver acknowledging fault. Probable causes engine water temperature exceeding 95 degrees Celsius in display. Action by driver. Engine water temperature exceeding 95 degrees Celsius in display. Check water temperature in display. Before this message, message comes as engine temperature high, reduce power. Immediate action. Put GF switch in off. Observing load and road and raise the engine for cooling the water. Put remark in the local logbook and advise PCOR, power controller. Engine speed comes to idle due to power ground. Fault message coming, power circuit ground fault. Message code 1007. Restriction. Engine comes on idle, motoring and dynamic braking prohibited. Alarm bell ringing continuously. Driver acknowledging fault. Probable causes. Moisture in traction motors. Flash over in traction motors. Cracked insulator on traction alternator. Traction motor power rectifier. Dynamic brake grids. BKT. REV. Power contactor. Any external metal parts touching to power terminal. Any power circuit. Cable is rubbing to body and insulation is damaged. Action by driver. If the fault is momentary, put master handle on idle. Fault will disappear after 15 seconds. Put GF switch in off. Put TM4 toggle switch in off and isolation of motors one by one for rectification. If no success, stop the loco by applying the loco brakes. In display menu, set mixed for display mode. Check TANGI on display for leakage current of traction alternator. Checking in display for excessive leakage current and work on lower notches. Put remark in the local logbook and advise PCOR, power controller. Control circuit starting ground fault coming and engine not cranking. Fault message coming. Control circuit ground fault. Message code 1008. Restriction. Engine not cranking. Alarm bell. Ringing continuously with buzzer for 30 seconds. Driver acknowledging fault. Probable causes. Any control circuit wiring is grounded. Any equipment like dust blower motors, sanders, coil lighting circuit etc connected in control circuit are having low or zero insulation resistance value. The CGR is open circuited. Action by driver. Open seal of GRCO2 and put off. Now start cranking of engine. Press start push button. After successful starting of engine, Provide GRCO2 in place. Put remark in the local logbook and advise PCOR, power controller. Loco not moving in motoring and over speeding. Fault message coming. Loco over speeding, move master controller handle to idle. Message code 1015. Restriction. Motoring prohibited. Alarm bell. Ringing continuously for 30 seconds. Driver acknowledging fault. Probable causes. Locomotive speed is high. Action by driver. Put throttle handle on idle immediately. Let the speed of loco come within set limit. Do braking by A9 if required. Reduce the notches and maintain set limit of speed. Put remark in the local logbook and advise PCOR, power controller. Fault message coming. GF stuck open. Run auto manual test. Can't power up. Electrical control problem. 
message code 1018 restriction can't power up alarm bell ringing for 30 seconds driver acknowledging fault probable causes defective gf contactor gf coil burned wiring fault from mep660 to gf contactor coil action by driver defect in wire terminal from mep660 to gf contactor coil check wire terminal defective gf contactor check operation gf coil burnt check coil put ecs in on run properly ensure proper operation positive supply on gf coil is not available check wire number six terminal on gf coil put remark in the local logbook and advise pcor power controller Crankcase motor failure indication coming and CEB breaker off message displaying. Fault message coming, CEB circuit breaker off. Message code 1019. Restriction. No restriction, only indication. Alarm bell. Ringing continuously. Driver acknowledging fault. Probable causes. Tripping of CEB or defect in CEB. Defective wiring, crankcase exhaustor breaker, feedback status is low as sensed by MEP660. Action by driver, tripping of CEB or defect in CEB. Reset CEB circuit breaker, defective wiring, check wire terminals. Check crankcase motor for functioning, checking of vibration and exhaust of the motor. Put remark in the local logbook and advise PCOR, power controller. Fault message coming. Cranking contactor stuck open. Engine may not cranking. Message code 1140. Restriction. Engine cranking prohibited. Alarm bell. Ringing up to 5 seconds. Driver acknowledging fault. Probable causes Defect in CKC contactor Defect in output card MLSD16 in slot number 14 Cable connector ID AY may be loose Cranking contactor CK1, CK2 and CK3 may be defective Digital input card MDIP16 may be defective in slot 10 Action by driver this message comes only at the time of engine cranking. Be sure. If the fault is intermittent, automatic recovery on opening of auxiliary contact of CK1, CK2 or CK3. Check closing of battery knife switch. Manually operate and check free operation of CKC, CK1, CK2 and CK3. Check glowing of both green and yellow LEDs 0, 1, 2 on the digital input card MDIP16 in slot 10. If LEDs are glowing, open manually aux contact of CK1, CK2 and CK3. Check condition of LEDs. LEDs should go off. If LEDs not going off, Pack the cranking contactors with insulating sheets. Pack carefully. Press start button. Start the engine. Put remark in the local logbook and advise PCOR, power controller. Loco is moving with field shunting and motoring prohibited in parallel combination. Fault message coming. Field shunting relay FSR and FS contactors FS2X stuck closed. Message code 1074. Restriction. Motoring always with field shunting. Motoring in parallel prohibited. Alarm bell. Ringing continuously for 30 seconds. Driver acknowledging fault. Probable causes. FS contactor welded. 
defective FSR relay, defective output card, glowing of unequal green LEDs and yellow LEDs on digital input card in slot 12. Action by driver, FS contactor welded. Check weld of FS contactor and remove it. Defective FSR relay, check FSR relay. Defective output card, check output card. Check glowing of 10 green LEDs and yellow LEDs on digital input card in slot 12. Check personally. Put remark in the loco logbook and advise PCOR, power controller. Fault message coming. Field shunting FSR CKT open. Message code 1075. Restriction. Motoring with field shunting but motoring in parallel prohibited. Alarm bell. Ringing continuously for 30 seconds. Driver acknowledging fault. Probable causes. Defective FSR relay. Defective digital output card. Defective wiring of FS contactor feedback. Defective digital input card. Action by driver. Put master handle in idle. Set display mode to manual test for outputs. Set on display. Enter 24 and press enter key to test the FSR operation. On display. Press 1 key to switch on FSR relay. FSR relay should pick up and FS contactors should also pick up. Check slackness of connection of cable ID AZ at MEP660 control unit. If slack, tighten. Put remark in the local logbook and advise PCOR, power controller. Battery is not charging, battery voltage is low. Fault message coming, battery voltage is low. Message code 1061. Restriction, loco may stall with buzzer sound for 30 seconds for every 10 minutes. Alarm bell, buzzer sounds for 30 seconds. Driver acknowledging fault. Probable causes, auxiliary generator failed to develop voltage and batteries are not charging. Action by driver. Check for tripped AGFB and MB1 circuit breakers. Check on front panel. Check the tightness of ESS connector at ESS. Check connection personally. Put remark in the local logbook and advise PCOR, power controller. Motoring prohibited, dynamic brake prohibited due to cranking contactor closed. Fault message coming, cranking contactor CK stuck closed. Message code 1029. Restriction, motoring prohibited, dynamic brake prohibited. Alarm gong switched on continuously. Driver acknowledging fault. Probable causes, main tips of cranking contactor CK1. CK2, CK3 got welded. Action by driver. Shut down the engine. Open battery knife switch. Separate the welded tips with a wooden stick and clean tips. After the tips are separated, alarm bell stops and the reset message is displayed. Cranking contactor stuck closed, fault recovered. Closed battery knife switch. Put remark in the loco logbook and advise PCOR, power controller. No battery charging, AG failed or AGFB or MB1 tripped. Fault message coming, no battery charging due to major faults. Message code 2000. Restriction, nil. Alarm bell, buzzer for 30 seconds for every 10 minutes. Driver acknowledging fault. Probable cause. Auxiliary generator failed to develop voltage and batteries are not charging. Action by driver. Check for tripped AGFB and MB1 breakers. If anyone found trip, reset it.
Check for tightness of ESS connector at ESS. Following faults will also be displayed as warning since loco is running on batteries. 1062 Battery voltage is high. 1063 AG field drive short. 1141 AG output high fault. 1142 Battery charging current high. 1143 AG output over current fault. 1144 AG field over current. 1145 AG output open circuit fault. 1146 AG field circuit open or short. Put remark in the local logbook and advise PCOR power controller. Fault message coming. Cranking contactor stuck closed. Message code 2029. Restriction. Cranking prohibited. Buzzer for 5 seconds. Probable causes. Main tips of cranking contactor CK1, CK2, CK3 might have welded. Action by driver. Open the battery knife switch. Separate the welded tips with a wooden stick and clean tips. After the tips are separated, alarm bell stops and the reset message is displayed. Cranking contactor stuck closed, fault recovered. Close battery knife switch. Put remark in the local logbook and advise PCOR, power controller. Fault message coming. VCD applied penalty brake, move master controller to idle and press reset to release brake. Message code 1153. Restriction. Motoring not permitted till the master handle is brought to idle and loco speed is dropped to zero and blinking LED should stop. Alarm bell for 5 seconds. Probable causes. VCD applied due to improper operation of loco. Failed to press VCD reset switch. Defective VCD unit. Action by driver. Bring master handle to idle till loco speed is dropped to zero. Wait till VCD LED blinking is stopped. Press VCD reset push button to release penalty brakes. In this video film, we have learnt about Introduction of old excitation control system Introduction of microprocessor based control system Salient features of microprocessor control system Additional features of microprocessor control system Items removed from previous control system Description of some important assemblies of microprocessor control system Display unit and navigation through menus Classification and reset procedure of fault messages Important do's and don'ts Troubleshooting